Welcome to the Door of Hope TV broadcast, being filmed in the city of the great King Jerusalem. Living Bread International is a church, an NGO, and a media ministry. It is reaching out to the whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord in the Holy Land, a good land flowing with milk and honey. Living Bread is running with the vision to bring good news into 27 refugee camps by the life-giving spirit of Jesus Christ. The team is taking milk to babies, clothes to the poor, and Christian education to those that want to learn the truth. Vans are running with aid to seek the lost. Water and supplies are being given to the Moabites. The Sudanese are getting blankets. The refugees are being educated. A great God and a great commission. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're in Jerusalem, the city of the great king, and we just had an amazing time with the Lord. We were doing communion, and we were breaking bread with the king, and I had just said, for God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but live forever. And I want to tell you something. All of a sudden, it was like a mini tornado in this place. Woo, woo. The winds were blowing. We had a couple visitors that shot out the door. But the rest of us are still here celebrating the wind of God that's blowing in this house. Oh, come from the four winds, oh, breath of God, and breathe on those dry bones. Breathe on those dry bones that they may come to life. And my prayer right now today from Jerusalem, the city of the great king, is that same wind that blew through this sanctuary this morning. Let it be released and blow through this sanctuary of your heart. Let the wind of God be released from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Holy and righteous Father, you are amazing God. You're amazing. You're altogether lovely. You're beautiful. You're a God of miracles. You're a God of winds. And Lord, I can't wait to see what you're going to do this year in this great season we have stepped our feet into because God is going to show us his loving kindness. God is going to reveal his covenant to us. God is going to open a door for you that no man can shut, and he's going to shut doors that you're not supposed to go through because he is hedging his people in, and he is making the crooked place straight because he loves us. He loves us so much. God loves us, and what a season, what a God. We bless you, God. Lord, what do you want to bring from heaven to earth? Because you had us pray, your kingdom come and your will be done. Well, this morning, you released the wind of God. What else do you want to release today, God? What else do you want to release today? Lord, whatever's on your heart, let it be released upon the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord is speaking to me this morning out of... 2 Chronicles 29, verse 3. In the first year of Hezekiah's reign, the first month, he opened the door of the house of the Lord and he repaired it. So Hezekiah, year one, he decides to repair the house of the Lord. And he brought the priest in. He said, hear me, Levites, now sanctify yourself and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers and carry the rubbish out of the holy place. And I feel this year, God is going to start taking the rubbish out of the holy place. God is going to tip the tables 
of the money changers and those that sell his anointing. And God is going to take the rubbish out of the holy place. That's on the heart of my father this morning. I'm going to take the rubbish out of the holy place. For our fathers have trespassed and they've done evil in the eyes of our God. They've forsaken him, turned away their faces from the dwelling place of the Lord, and they turned their backs on him. They shut up the doors and they put out the lamps. And you know, there's a lot of churches closing down. People are just walking away because they're so disgusted. They're just shutting them down. They're shutting down churches saying, go to another church. And it says, the wrath of the Lord fell upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he gave them up to trouble, desolation, jeering of the enemy. Do you know what it's like when a church shuts down? When a church shuts down, do you know what the enemies, the mocking spirits? Oh, they couldn't, ha you know, the lamp couldn't stand. They mocked our father they mock the lord that's what the demons do when the church is shut down when people say oh i'm not going to go worship anymore when it becomes a place of desolation what is our call as the people of god to get into the house of god and start praying the devils and the junk and the garbage out of the holy place and believe we can have a place to boldly proclaim his praises that's our commission. And it says, because of our fathers in verse 9, our fathers have fallen by the sword, our sons, daughters, wives are all in captivity. So what God is saying is they turn their back on the holy place, they filled the place full of rubbish, and then they went into captivity, oppression by the demonic forces. And this is what's happened in God's house today, in many areas, many areas. It's just people don't want to be there anymore. My sons, don't be negligent, for the Lord has chosen you to stand before him and serve him, that you should minister to the Lord. Every one of us that are called, chosen, and elected, to stand before the Lord, have a responsibility to minister before the Lord and to pray the holy place clean once again. We know, okay, his kingdom is coming. Pray, my kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And we know God loves to be worshipped. And it's okay if there's a big church of 5,000 people. I mean, we do a lot of home churches here in this land but it's okay if you have a big big church but you have to keep the holy place clean you have to run the demonic forces out it has to be a holy place where god can reign because god said come out touch not the unclean thing and i will dwell in your midst i will dwell in your midst I love God being in this sanctuary. I love him being a part of every part of our day. It's all centered about God. What does God want? What is God doing? What is God saying? That is our life. That is our life here in the Holy Land. It's all about God. Amen? Amen. So it says in verse 15, they gathered their brethren, they sanctified themselves, they went according to the commands of the king, the words of the Lord, to cleanse the house of the Lord. And it says, then the priests went into the inner part of the house of the Lord and they brought all the debris out. You know, I'm believing he's going to build a church that's pure, holy, and spotless. And full of power. He's going to build a church and we're all a part of it. And I'm believing what has been built by men is going to be torn down. But what is built by the Spirit is forever. And I believe that we will gather together in multitudes and praise the King in holiness and in power. 
being forever perfected by his blood. And so what Israel did, Israel had the same problem. They had let the temple be full of trash. They let the temple be full of rubbish. And the people walked away from it. They no longer wanted to gather. And Hezekiah said, we're going to clean the temple. That's what we're going to do. We're going to clean the place of the Lord. His first year. And this is great. This is great. Putting God first. And in verse 18, it said, they went to King Hezekiah and said, we cleanse the house of the Lord, the altar of burnt offerings and all of its articles, the table of showbread with its articles. And then they brought in the bulls and the rams. And it said, they sprinkled it on the altar. Likewise, they killed the rams and sprinkled the blood on the altar. They killed the lambs and sprinkled the blood on the altar. In verse 24, the priests killed them. They presented their blood on the altar as a sin offering to make atonement for all of Israel. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord. We can ask the Father, Lord, let the blood of your Son make atonement for all of Israel, for all of Israel, because the blood of the Son is the atonement that lasts forever, all of eternity. And so you're going to find out what Hezekiah and how he prayed. Hezekiah prayed just like I just prayed, and God healed all the people. So I'm going to take you to that scripture. Moving with the Spirit of God and being in the good land is a taste of heaven on earth. We love to worship him while on our custom-made tours around the country. The Lord has opened a new door for the team at Living Bread Church. In our Bless the Child program, we are coordinating dying children out of the Gaza Strip. They are without medical referrals and no treatment is available without someone paying for it. Some of the children would die without our help. With your funding, we can get the children the medical treatment they need. You can also join the team in praying for these children. The Lord Jesus Christ said, What we have done to the least of these, we have done unto him. To support this great cause, contact information is on your screen. So then it says in verse 27, Hezekiah command them to offer the burnt offering on the altar. When the burnt offering began, the song of the Lord began with trumpets and instruments of David, king of Israel. All the assembly worshipped and the singers sang and they bowed and they worshipped. Hallelujah. And it says in verse 30, moreover, King Hezekiah and the leaders commanded the Levites to sing praise to the Lord with the words of David and Asaph, the seer. And they sang praises with gladness, and they bowed their heads and they worshipped. Then Hezekiah answered and said, Now that you have consecrated yourselves to the Lord, come near, bring sacrifices and thank offerings into the house of the Lord. So the assembly brought in sacrifices and thank offerings. And as many were a willing heart brought burnt offerings. Isn't that amazing? They cleaned out the house of the Lord. They washed everything with the blood. They said, now you may bring your offerings. Now you may bring your offerings to the Lord. Wow. It says in verse 36, Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced that God had prepared the people. So the events took place suddenly. And let me tell you something. We are in a year of suddenly. We're in a year of a sudden move of God. You watch. God is just going to show up. God is going to be in your space. We're going to see a sudden move of God come down. And he'll blow out the rubbish because he's going to make room for himself. He's going to make room for himself because we're called as his people to minister unto the king, to minister to him in holiness. Hallelujah. In chapter 30, Hezekiah sent to all of Israel 
that they should come to the Lord at Jerusalem to keep Passover to the Lord God of Israel. And it says, all the assembly in Jerusalem agreed to keep Passover in the second month. Now watch this. They weren't keeping Passover at the prescribed time by law. It said they couldn't keep it at the regular time because a sufficient number of priests had not consecrated themselves, nor had the people gathered together at Jerusalem. And the matter pleased the king and all the assembly. So they resolved to make a proclamation throughout Israel that they should come to Passover to the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem since they had not done so in a long time in the prescribed manner. So the king said, I want all of Israel to come to Jerusalem. But we can't do Passover at the prescribed time according to the sanctuary laws. We're going to do it a month later. So they sent runners all through the land to tell them. And they said, don't be stiff-necked. Come to Jerusalem. Yield yourselves to the Lord. And it says, as they run through Israel, in verse 10, chapter 30, 2 Chronicles, so the runners passed from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh as far as Zebulun, but they laughed at them and they mocked them. Here they had the word, come, come into Jerusalem. Come celebrate the Passover. The Passover is awesome. The Passover, we celebrate death passing us over. And us as Christians, we celebrate, we got Jesus Christ in our heart. The lamb's blood is on our heart and the death angel will never touch us. So Passover is very important. And it says, they told them to come to Jerusalem and it said, God was on Judah and gave them a singleness of heart to obey the command of the king and the leaders at the word of God. And many people of great assembly came into Jerusalem to celebrate. It said the priest and the Levites were ashamed, sanctified themselves, and brought burnt offerings to the house of the Lord. They stood in the place according to their custom, according to the law of Moses. The priest sprinkled blood received from the hand of the Levites. There were many in the assembly, now listen to this, who had not sanctified themselves. Therefore the Levites, in charge of the slaughter of the Passover, for lambs for everyone who was not clean to sanctify them for the Lord. For a multitude of the people had come. Many from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, Zebulun had not cleansed themselves. But they ate the Passover contrary to what was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them and says, May the good Lord provide for atonement for everybody who's eating of the Passover, who is not sanctified, who is not clean according to the temple laws, Lord, may you bless them all. And this is how King Hezekiah prayed. And he said, bless those that prepare his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, though he's not cleansed according to the purification of his sanctuary. And look at this, verse 20. The Lord listened to Hezekiah and healed everybody. He healed everybody. What is the Passover lamb to a Christian? The Passover lamb is Jesus Christ. And it's saying here, even though they weren't clean, according to the sanctuary and according to the laws, even though they were eating the Passover lamb and it wasn't Passover, it was a different month, even though all these things were going on, the people were allowed to take part in the Passover and God healed them all. What do you think of that? Is that like totally amazing? And I have heard so many people say, I, I remember being in a church and the pastor says, if you don't know the Lord, don't touch the Passover. Don't touch 
don't touch the communion. And I had brought two people to the church that were meeting me there, and they were sitting in a different seat, right? And so I was sitting a few rows back, and I thought, oh, no, I was a baby Christian. Oh, no, what am I going to do? They're eating the communion, and they don't know the Lord. And I thought, oh, what should I do, God? And the Lord said, sit still. And so the Passover, the preacher goes on, and he's speaking about communion. Afterwards, the two people that didn't know the Lord, that had done communion, came up to me. The girl came up to me, and she goes, I knew as soon as we sat down and they started talking about communion, we were supposed to do communion. So when she said that to me, I didn't say anything. I just turned white, and I was a baby Christian. I said, do you want to get Jesus into your heart? She said, yes. Meanwhile, her boyfriend had run out the back door. So I said, okay, and I lead her to the Lord, right? The boyfriend comes back in and says, you knew this would happen to me. I said, what happened to you? I went outside and I was throwing up black vial, black, when he partook of Jesus Christ, as he partook of communion, black vile come out of him. The demons couldn't stay in him any longer. That's the God that I serve. Jesus Christ is for the whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ is for everybody. Quit cutting the people off. Even the Jewish people, they did Passover at the wrong gate. The people weren't sanctified. They weren't cleansed. They hadn't done it according to God. And it says right here, Hezekiah prayed. And in 2 Chronicles 30, verse 20, the Lord listened to Hezekiah and healed the people. Wow, what a God. That's Jesus. That's who Jesus is. He's a healer. And his arms are open for the whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. He isn't grieved that somebody would go to church and go up and take part of him. This doesn't grieve the Lord. He did a major deliverance in front of my eyes. And two souls came to the Lord after they broke bread with the king. Wow. What a God and what a testimony. Amen? The Lord bless you from Jerusalem, the city of the great king. If you don't have Jesus in your heart, he's there for everybody. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Wash me in your shed blood. Fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. And that fact, you're delivered out of darkness into his marvelous light. Lord bless you from Jerusalem. Hi, my name is Natalie and um, I came from Washington, D.C. with a team um, of 10 and we have been been worshiping, doing prayer sets at Sukkot Hillel, the 24-7 house of prayer in Jerusalem. I didn't realize it would be so powerful to pray for Jerusalem, and it, it was such a, a new feeling in prayer to be in Jerusalem, in the 24-7 house of prayer, praying for Jerusalem and releasing the sound of worship um, to God and, and His holy city, and it was such an honor. And um, I, I love being in Jerusalem and in Israel, and um, to worship God here is, is just extravagant, and I love it. Moving with the Spirit of God and being in a good land is a taste of heaven on earth. We love to worship Him while on our custom-made tours around the country. The Lord has opened a new door for the team at Living Bread Church. In our Bless the Child program, 
we are coordinating dying children out of the Gaza Strip. They are without medical referrals and no treatment is available without someone paying for it. Some of the children would die without our help. With your funding, we can get the children the medical treatment they need. You can also join the team in praying for these children. The Lord Jesus Christ said, What we have done to the least of these, we have done unto him. To support this great cause, contact information is on your screen. Living Bread International Church, NGO and TV studio invites you to the Holy Land. It is a good land, flowing with milk and honey, a land that drinks the rain of heaven. Join our team in worship and prayers to our living God, who answers from above. Joining the move of His Spirit in the good land will be the greatest season you have ever spent. There is nothing on the earth like serving the Lord from Jerusalem, the city of the great King, Jericho, the doorway to the land, or Gaza, where he roars for his sons in the west and they come running to him. If you cannot come and give of your time, you can join us by being one of his prayer warriors or sending resources to get the job done. Once in the promised land as a volunteer, you'll be stationed in one of the cities we are working in. The Lord has given us a great sphere of influence in the Middle East. Share in this vision and mandate to see the Kingdom of God manifest among the people in the refugee camps. Teaching the Bible, building the King's Church, making partners for peace in the Middle East, and blessing Israel as you do so, is the mandate of the Lord. Those who know their God will do great exploits. If volunteering is not for you, we invite you to join us on our Holy Land tours. God bless you from Jerusalem, the city of the great King. Contact information is on your screen. Thank you for watching Door of Hope. Your support is making a difference. God is honored and will bless us all as we sow into the move of His Spirit with our lives, prayer, and funding. Contact information is on your screen.